Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Patty Framo here. Today is Monday, December the 3rd, 2018. It's 4 p.m. New York time. That's 1 p.m. Los Angeles time. And it's 9 p.m. London time. And if you're in Sydney, Australia, it's 8 a.m. Good morning, Sydney, Australia. Welcome to your Daily Dose of Happy. And uh, our week is off to a, a fabulous uh, start. We're going to be doing another Q&A today. Uh, it was really successful, all the other times we've been doing, including last week. And uh, uh, it's been fun, Patty, because when we do the Q&As, that's when we get all this art- audience participation from the Law of Attraction Change My Life group on Facebook. And we were getting a lot last week. I hope we get the same amount this week, you know? Yeah, I hope so, too. That was a lot of fun. Oh, it was, it was terrific. It was really, really good. So um, I'm going to give people a moment here to uh, tune in. Uh, well, Jamie already liked us, so Jamie has just tuned in. Um, that's a good thing because she's Yay, the admin. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> but, Hi, uh, Jamie. Hello. I'm sure other people are saying hello. I'm dying here. to meet all these people. You know, there's something about having these Facebook people that you're friends with and not having met them in person, just like us having not met in person. There's, that's true. I just would love it if we could all get together sometime and Wouldn't have that a be fun? away party. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I'd like that. I don't know where we do it because we're all <laughs> over the world, but nevertheless, we pick some place, I guess. Have a have a big mm-hmm. bash. Come to San Diego. Always got sunny days here. This is true. Yes, that's what San Diego is like. That is very true. It's a beautiful place. Um, so let's see. Okay, people are starting to tune in. I want to make sure I got everything um, set up here properly so that I can actually see the comments. Um, yeah, here we go. Oh, and Jamie's waving hello. Hello, Jamie. There we go. Very okay. good. And, uh, oh, I got another question from Nasha. She wants to know when we're going live. So I'll let her know we're live now. And I'll even give her a link to it. Whoops. I got the wrong link. <laughs> <laughs> not, not what I intended to do. We'll try this one. Yeah, there she goes. Okay, now she's she can get in, too. So um, how you been? I mean, uh, we, we haven't talked in a week, but uh, I I mean, listeners have some small idea of what my week has been like. I haven't clued them in on everything, but uh, I've been through an upsy downsy kind of week riding the roller coaster. I hope yours has been a little bit smoother than mine has been. Oh, no. No? Up and down. <laughs> Heaven and hell. It's been a tough week. I, you know, I kind of feel like I wonder if when we get into law of attraction and we get really good at raising our vibration, that when we fall, we get used to that feeling a lot. You mm-hmm. know, we get comfortable with that higher vibration feeling. Oh, yeah. And when we fall off that high-flying disc, it is like... Ow. Mm. It's painful. It is. It's like down, you're like way down there. <laughs> and I feel like it's happens more in a way after you get, uh, you know, sort of more used to having it high because there's such a contrast because between where we are up here and when you fall off that disc, you're just like crashing. It's an interesting question. I mean, I think part of it is we are all still learning how to stay there. You know, mm-hmm. some of us are better off than others. I mean, uh, for instance, my morning, Monday morning uh, co-host Louie is on there like 95% of the time. So he does a really good job of staying up there. Um, and he's even told me that on those occasions where he slips off, he doesn't fall down very far anymore, which is ideal. You know, that's like the best mm-hmm. place to be. But, but while we're yeah. still learning it, you know, because cause we're all learning this stuff. We're all getting better at it. Um, in fact, Louie gave me a really nice compliment after the podcast today, telling me how much progress he saw in me in like the last two months since he and I have been doing a podcast together. So thank you again for that. Luke. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when you're learning, you know, it, it's not like all of us have gotten to the point now where we can maintain 100% focus on the things we want and 0% focus on the things we don't want. We're, we're, we're mm-hmm. still practicing. And I mean, I've been having a number, you, you talked about uh, getting to know people in person. I'd love to be able to do that, but even getting to know people on Facebook, um, I'm, I've been getting more and more, you know, private messages and, and uh, interactions and posts and so forth. And it's the same theme over and over again. It's always the same theme. It's, I fell off, I, 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 I'm in a lousy place. How do I climb out of this place? From somebody who's yeah. been practicing it for 10 years or, you know, something like that. It's always the same thing. We, we, it's so easy for us to fall off. Um, I actually came up with an idea over the weekend that I very quickly implemented late Sunday, it was from a conversation I had with one of our listeners. In the conversation, uh, she was telling me about stuff that was going on in her life, which was pretty pretty difficult stuff. And 
asking for advice on, you know, how to, she had manifested part of this big dream and all she needed was the other half of it to, to manifest and get the rest of her dream. And so I was saying, well, just keep doing what you've been doing because it's working. You just got to stick with it some more. And uh, she liked that. Exactly. But, but she was also expressing what so many people express, that it's hard because she doesn't have a good support group or anything like that. It just got me thinking. It, it reminded me of what they do when they teach kids to swim. They have that buddy system, right? So um, mm-hmm. you, know, you always have your buddy and you're, you're, you're checking on your buddy to make sure he's okay. You know, maybe uh, you're also helping him with strokes or he's helping you with strokes, that kind of thing. But, you're, you know, it's mainly a life-saving thing, but it's also uh, a teaming thing. And it occurred to me, well, why don't we have a buddy system for LOA? I mean, we should because, yeah. we, you know, so many times we just need that little extra bit of support. And what better way to do it than through online because then, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can still provide support for somebody else. It's true. So it's I create a, a Facebook page and a, a Facebook group, both of which are called Pivot Pals, based on the idea of ah, pivoting. And uh, That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And we've got people who've signed up for the group and for the pa- and like the page and so forth and um, not a whole lot of activity has gotten going yet. We're still trying to figure out what exactly we're going to do, but I figured get the impetus going, you know, and uh, mm-hmm, see what comes mm-hmm. out of it. That and and I think also, you know, that's a lot of where if people are feeling like they need that little extra, but that's kind of what coaching is about. This is, is true. having that person helping you through that stuff that sort of gets all jumbled in your head. And it's, I know for me, I mean, I'm, I'm a verbal processor. So mm-hmm. for me to process internally, everything just spins in circles. Yes. And it's very <laughs> helpful for me to be able to talk it out loud with somebody. Even, even just hearing yourself say the words is, is amazing how powerful that can be because you hear the words back to yourself and you're like, wow, I didn't even realize I felt that way. Mm, Exactly. So I find that coaching, I think, is sort of taking that, what you're describing, but to that next level when Mm -hmm. you really need extra support. I think you're right. Yeah, but that's so cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that idea. And actually, it's also kind of what we're uh, doing today with a a Q&A. We've had quite a few Law of Attraction Q&As lately, and they've been quite successful. People have been taking advantage, and and we want to encourage people who are listening in today, you know, if you have any, anything you're dealing with, you know, some issue, um, you're trying to attract something, you have a question about how stuff works, you know, any of this stuff, you know, post something because uh, that's that's really what we're doing here today. We're, we don't have a specific topic. It's just let's see what we, what we can do to help people out because we've got exactly. a, a life coach extraordinaire who is really, really good at this stuff. And, <laughs> and I've gotten fairly good at stuff too. So between the two of us, we ought to be able you to figure are. an answer to almost anything. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because I find too that, you know, for people who have been practicing, practicing it a long time, it still is helpful to get that support. But in the beginning, especially when you first start listening to Abraham Hicks audios and you're like, what the heck does this mean? What's a vortex? Yeah, right. What is vibration? What What are all these? There's so many layers to it. It seems like it's this simple concept, which it kind of is. Mm. But there's layers and layers and layers and all these oh, really are. strategies and approaches yeah. that can help. Because just last week, uh, when I had my um, meetup on Saturday, uh, I had some feedback from one of the members saying that some of the people who were more advanced were feeling frustrated that the beginners were having such beginner questions oh. and having to hear that explanation of what mm-hmm. that is. But I feel like that's so critical. So I'm kind of modifying things to be more geared towards people who are novices because that beginner part you're just desperate for that help and information i was anyway i've also found i mean even in the even after the beginning i found that it really does pay to go back to basics as you've already have Mm -hmm. learned quite a bit of it um for instance uh the abraham hicks book law of attraction the basics of the teachings of abraham i didn't read that until this year now i've been working on practicing law of attraction since 2007 but I never read that particular book until this year. And then Wendy Dillard and I uh, went through it page by page and, and basically hashed it and tore it apart and explained the did piece by piece and so forth. And I got so much out of it. It, it almost yeah, made me yeah. wish I had read it, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> but, yeah. but the, <laughs> well, the, the, you the know, point is you, you read it, it when you're ready, right? Well, you do. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. But, but the point is that you, even if it's something that you think you already know, and a lot of it I thought I did already know, you pick up nuances. And that's what I've noticed about Abraham Hicks. I've noticed it particularly with Neville Goddard. Um, many of the uh, people from the past who, uh, 
you know, played a, a significant role in, in helping us understand how all this stuff works. You know, people from like Napoleon Hill to uh, Florence Scovel Shin to uh, more modern day Tony Robbins. I mean, there's you, you can look pretty much across the board and they're all contributing to it. And every single one of them has nuance, deep down nuance that you have to kind of think about what it is they're saying or writing in order to really grasp like, wait a minute, do I have the whole picture yet? I thought I had the whole picture, but now I'm not so sure. Maybe I'm leaving something out. And you know what? That I That's true. I am. I'm leaving that piece out right there. And that, that's what you find as you're going along. Yeah, that and also just reminding yourself, because I feel like a lot of times there's things I know, but you just forget. It's mm-hmm. like crazy how you just forget you do. basic concepts. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I find that sometimes I'll fall off that high flying disc and I'll be in that bad place like I was had a bad day yesterday. One oh. of those bad days. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, of course, the the the. Uh, vibration that you're putting out, that you're resonating at, you're going to attract more and more and more of that. So my just, oh, yeah. my day just went bleh, just downward down spiral. the tubes. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can just remind myself that the reason I'm feeling that emotion, that negative emotion, is because I'm not keeping up with something that I already put out there in my vortex. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. There's something out there that I want, and I'm not keeping up with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm resisting it in some way. And when you say it that way, it just does, it sounds like such a simple thing. It is a simple thing. You know? <laughs> I know, I know. But then how do you get, you know, when you're feeling in that bad place, then, you know, what are the different exercises and processes and strategies can we use to move up mm-hmm. to that place where we can actually hear that? Because sometimes, you know, when you're in that bad place, you can't even hear stuff. It's true. It's, it's amazing. True. And, and I think that that's part of why going back to rereading things or, um, you know, hearing them again, you hear it in a completely different way because at that time you only knew this much and now you know this much and you're able to absorb so much more of that information. That's true. And use it. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you asked, you know, what what do you do when you're in the middle of that downward spiral? I, I don't have the complete answer yet, but I do have part of the answer. This much I know does work. As soon as I notice to any slight degree that I'm in that downward spiral, no matter what it is I'm thinking about, no matter what it is I'm talking about, I'll just go, stop, just, just stop. (laughs) And just to break the, break the pattern, just to break the concentration, just stop. (laughs) If if it means I have to just go take a break, just stop, just stop right there. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny. A friend of mine last night who I went out with because I was just in such a bad place. He's like, it's all right. We'll, we'll go out and I'll, you know, make you feel a little bit happier. And he did. I got to vent for a while. But what he does is he looks at this big um, off and on switch when he's in the middle of the wakes up in the middle of the night and those things are just zooming and zooming and zooming around in your head. And he flips that off switch. And for some reason that works. Well, I kept trying. It wasn't working. But everybody has their <laughs> own little little tools that work for them. You know, and and it could be like you talk about your walking meditations. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it could be taking a nap. There's sure. a lot of different ways that we can approach it. but That's true. Yeah. That's true. In fact, um, uh, since we're also live streaming to the Law of Attraction Change My Life group, anyone there um, who's listening who wants to share their own tricks that they use, their own little secret that they use when they find themselves in that negative spiral, what, what's the first thing that you do to break out of it? You know, share your, your trick. Let us know. Oh, okay. Well, Patricia just gave us hers. She said, whoosh. She says, whoosh. That, that's her way of stopping herself. So, ah. hey, that works. That works. Whatever works is, is what is what matters. But, uh, exactly. uh, you know, share, share your particular trick. And, and also want to invite you, if, if you have anything that you're dealing with that you want uh, you know, our expert help with, we would love to give it. So, you know, just type your question into the, uh, the chat area if you're listening to the live stream. If you're listening to the podcast after the fact, obviously that's not going to work quite so well. However, <laughs> we don't want to leave you out. There is a way that you can do it. It's just it's a little bit time delayed. Send us a message. You know, because we love yeah. getting the emails. We can, and, we can talk about it the next week. Absolutely. Even the next day. I mean, just <laughs> it, it depends yeah. on how urgent it is. I mean, but I've, I've, right away. I've had stuff come in and it came in an hour before a podcast. I said, well, we're talking about that one today. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a great mm-hmm. way to get that kind of reaction. But uh, that and also if people have questions just about some of the meanings of some of the words, I know that that can be a real challenge. That's true. For some people, what what do certain things mean and, and how do you. Well, the concepts are a little what bit are strange. What the steps about? 
you know, compared to what you're used to in, in, you know, like the, the traditional, typical modern day world, the, the, the wording means a little bit different kind of thing. Like, uh, we use the word the universe, right? Which is used in a, in a pretty different way out in the real world. The universe is just, you know, the planets and the stars and all that kind of thing. We use it in much more of an energetic way and has a, a very, very different meaning to it. So yeah, it, it's like, it's like the old joke about, uh, uh, understanding what's going on in, in the sports game that you're watching. It helps if you have a plat, uh, a program so you know who the players are. And the, the same thing exactly. is true with, with uh, you know, the verbiage of, of how deliberate creation works. So, yeah. So anything that's right. true. That's true. And even, um, the whole idea of like, when I, when you say universe, what I think of right away is source. Mm-hmm. So when I say put it out to the universe, I'm also thinking in terms of, Source, inner being, higher patty, you know, whatever it is. Higher patty. Oh, I like that. Higher patty. That's good. <laughs> Personalize it. That's you, really good. Because you have a higher wall. So I do. Patty. I like that. That, that, that. that feels good. Or my inner wall. I, I it like that one too. Personal. Yeah, it does. And I, I think we see something here. Jamie has posted, oh gosh, yes, if I indulge a negative thought momentum, I can suck contrast into my experience so quickly, I have to soften my body and soften my mind. It seems to allow an ascension in state. An ascension. I like that word. An ascension in state. But softening her body and softening her mind. Hmm? What does that mean, an ascension? Ascension uh, to rise up. Ascending? Ascending. Ascend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So softening her body as well as her mind. And her mind, yeah. Which is a good idea. Because softening is another way of saying being kind to yourself. That's been, a, that, that's been a theme for us this week, talking about how important it is to be kind to ourselves because we're so rough on ourselves. That's true. When it, I mean, when it comes to that's criticizing, true. we criticize ourselves more than we criticize anybody else. And, uh, yeah, yep. that, that, that needs to be uh, calmed a bit. <laughs> Preferably that's eliminated, but, but calmed. And sometimes if I sort of stand outside myself, if I'm feeling really, you know, sort of down on myself, um, I remember years ago going to a therapist who said, now, what would you do if you were talking to your daughter Mm. instead of myself? And it completely shifted everything for me. Well, I would never talk to my daughter that way. I would never think of it that way. I just want to soothe her and make her feel better. Mm -hmm. And it's that same thing. You know how sometimes people talk about your inner child or whatever. But I think a lot of it is just that inner being, that our self is this, you know, vulnerable marshmallow that needs soothing (laughs) you know (laughs) sometimes we can have those crusty exteriors but all of us have that little marshmallow which is kind of ironic when abraham tells us that our inner being always sees us in the best possible life so that marshmallow has a really strong ability to just stay focused on what it wants and not at all on what it don't want so so (laughs) how much of a marshmallow is it really i don't know (laughs) that's true yeah well i don't know i think we all have that soft inner core that sort of vulnerable inner core in, inside all of us. Yeah, yeah. And the more that we, you know, if we if we get down on ourselves and push ourselves and use all that efforting and yeah, well, all that exactly. kind of stuff, I don't yeah. feel like it, it doesn't work as well. Well, it counter it, it works in the wrong direction. That's that's the thing I've noticed. If I'm not being kind to myself, if I'm being kind of harsh on myself, it always produces the wrong result. <laughs> I never get a good result yeah. out of it, you know. So that and if we're efforting too hard, there's there's that n- analogy of the. Uh, Vacuum cleaner, you know, mm. and the vacuum cleaner is not plugged in and you're going back and forth and back and forth over the rug. Yeah. You're getting nowhere. You're putting all this effort in. You're working really, really hard. And you think if I just do it harder, it's going to work better. And obviously it's not going to because it's not attached to the energy. Exactly right. So you plug that vacuum cleaner in. It, it has all that energy coming up into it and it can suck the things up and you don't have to do too much effort. And it just does all the work for you. Mm-hmm. And the same way that when we can plug into our inner being or connect with at a high vibration with our with the vortex or source or higher patty or whatever you want to call it (laughs) that gives us like such power behind everything we do so we don't Mm. need to struggle and and effort so much absolutely true and i'm sure you know i feel like when i am able to do that things just kind of flow Mm -hmm. they just kind of happen easily you're on the way to work and 
the, the Red Sea is parting. All of the traffic is parting for you. You're I love that. Spaces. Yeah. When, yeah. That, that's always the, the clue that I'm in the zone. It's like, oh, wow, I guess I must be in the zone. Look at that. It's just opening right up for me. Mm-hmm. You know, cause sometimes I don't even notice I'm there. I just, I'm not feeling bad. So I figure, well, it couldn't be too, too bad if I'm not feeling bad, but it actually turns out I'm feeling pretty good. Just wasn't even paying attention yeah. to it more than anything else. Uh, we got exactly. a few few people commenting. I just want to share some of the comments. First of all, Jamie says uh-huh. she loves that you personalize your higher self. She thinks that's great. <laughs> she has a higher Jamie. She has a higher Jamie. <laughs> she does. Um, Nasha <laughs> says, for every time different idea uh, works for me, sometimes it's comedy, sometimes it's a nap, sometimes it's meditation. And that's a good point because it, it can be different for different people what works. And for even one person, different things can work at different times. Some things don't always work for you, so you try yeah. something else, right? Mm-hmm. And that's like that time when we develop, we talked and you develop that list of the things that raise your vibration because yeah. when we have, there's different things that help us at different times. And when you're in that low place, sometimes you can't even think or remember what it is that makes you feel good because you're not lined up with that. You're in this lower place and it's like, well, I know there's things that make me feel good, but I can't even think of what they are right now because you can't find them. You know, the, the funny like thing is, there from, most from of the there. time that list, because you, you're the one who talked me into creating that list and posting it on the wall, which I've done. And the funny thing about that list is most of the time that does work really nicely. But there are times I have found where I look at the list and none of the items look appealing to me. None yeah, at all. Like, I hate them all. I hate them I all. I hate everything. I, I don't yeah. want to have to do any <laughs> of that. I'm just so pissed off. And And what that does for me is it reminds me to ask myself, well, what is it I'm so pissed off about? Because that's what I forgot right. to do. Yeah. You know, I forgot to ask myself why I'm so negative. What am I so negative about? And then the reverse of that, where you, you know, if you figure out what you're pissed off about or or things that you don't want are happening and you do that piece of paper with on the left hand side, you put all those, do that exercise where you put all those things that you don't want that are making you feel bad and then put the reverse of what you do want. And sometimes when you get into that list of what you do want and you Mm. throw the other list out, the (laughs) what you do want if you're not clear, can just be how you want to feel. Mm. I just want to feel happier. I just want to feel soothed. I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel positive and hopeful, you know, whatever that is, and then focusing on whatever it is that can help you reach those feelings. But you're right. When you look at those, sometimes, you know, when you're in a really bad place, like that was me yesterday. I was like, I hate everything. I hate everyone. I hate everything. (laughs) You know, even when you practice this stuff all the time, it's amazing how sometimes you just – Get well, we have that these that habits that are just so ingrained. They've been, we've worked on them for so long. We've given so much lip service to them. We've given so much energy to all this negative junk by focusing on it over and over and over again. I mean, asking a doll to go away at the drop of a hat is probably a little bit asking too much. You know, sometimes they, well, exactly. they, they stick around for a while, you know, and take, it takes and time to know, get rid of them. Exactly. It does. It takes time. And also, you know, with that emotional scale in the asking it is given book, that page where she does or they do that scale from hopelessness to elation and right. all the emotions in the middle. Um, you know, we can't just go from here to there to right. make that big leap. It, and maybe the list of the things that are going to make you feel better are just too far of a leap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's even having little baby incremental steps or thinking, you know, yeah, gee, I'd love to feel, feel peaceful and hopeful, but I'm like nowhere near that. So I just want to go from maybe feeling yucky to just being angry. Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's going to be the next better feeling thought. Whatever it is that's going to be that little tiny incremental step to just get you going in that upward momentum. Because when you've got that downward spiral of momentum happening, sometimes you're like in this swirl of negativity and it feels so hopeless. Um and part of that would be maybe taking a nap if you can, mm-hmm. you know, just cut it off completely. Yeah. Yeah. Or reset. Stopping, stopping that momentum. Hitting the reset button can yeah. be very Anything effective. That's gonna, right. Right. Yeah. Anything that's going to get, just get you a tiny bit going in that upper momentum can start that whole momentum process going up. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, I should have told this to myself yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I keep wondering, is there some way to, to like create a virtual me so I can just turn on the, the virtual Walt app and have the app play and talk to me you know, periodically when I'm just Well, not you know, good. maybe we could do, you know, videos of ourselves. 
when we're in a really high flying vibration and feeling good or when we're soothing ourselves and have that recorded on your phone. <laughs> so you can just click shot. it and there is Walt saying, hire Walt going, you're wonderful, you're fabulous. Remember all the good things that have been happening to you. <laughs> it's funny because a there, lot of people... There, there's a part of me that there would be a very good chance that when I'm in that bad place and, and seeing the good Walt talking, there's a very good chance that I would say, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut the bleep up. <laughs> exactly. Shut up. Exactly. That's what I thought of too. Oh, just shut up. I don't want to hear about it. I just want to feel bad right now. And you know, if sometimes you're just, we just got to let ourselves hang out there for a little bit. Yep. You know, we, you, you just do the best you can. It's not like there's going to be this perfect answer. Yeah, it's funny. But usually, though, there is something going on that you're not addressing. That's that's the one thing that I have noticed. Because um, Anne-Marie and I were talking about this last night. We were talking about how, and I'm sure you know this and agree with this too, but uh, every negative emotion we have is ultimately based in fear, one way or another. And when we when we dig down to the root of it and we find what the fear is, then at least we've identified what's really going on, what the real issue is. Um, problem is when you're in the, the negative place, it's not always the best time to dig down to find out what the real issue is because you just say, oh, shut the bleep up. I don't want to have to deal with exactly. this. I, I just want to be mad exactly. for a while. <laughs> well, it's like Marianne Williams, so, Williamson's book, uh, Return to Love, and she just talks about it's either fear or love. Like those are always our two options. Yeah, they pretty much to are. To go in the direction of fear or yeah. go in the direction of love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really and true. And fear, though, can feel like so many different emotions. But – the bottom line is what it is. It's just in that low vibration where we're letting that mom momentum get the better of us. I'm, I'm looking in the comments. Jamie, Jamie loves the idea of the personal alignment video. She thinks that's a great one. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe we should be pushing mm -hmm. that one some more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where, where would you well, because we know what's going to feel good to us. Hmm. Presumably, we make I mean, the video sort of when a, we're feeling uh, good. It doesn't work too well if you don't do uh, well, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Exactly, but we can sort of customize it to the things that we like to hear from ourselves. I've often wondered if it might be useful to learn method acting, because that's, that's pretty much the oh. style of acting that everybody uses these days. And with method acting, you actually tap into, you know, an, a, a feeling that you experienced, you know, from your own past, from your own experience, so that you can be that character. And I wonder if it wouldn't be worthwhile for most of us to, to just learn that, not to be an actor, but just so we can learn how to tap into our different emotional states whenever we need to. So, well, and so, you know, they do talk about, or Abraham talks about how whatever it is we're thinking about and feeling and experiencing at the moment is what our reality is. That's right. And that's a great idea because you're right. If, with method, it, you know, if you're not, if you're just acting and you're not doing method acting, if you're just acting. Yeah. It just looks like it. you're pretending. Yeah. It doesn't feel real. That's why and those really the actors good. from the, the really good actors from the bygone days, from the golden age of Hollywood, were really really good because they were method acting without even knowing what it was called. But most right. actors were along the lines of what you were talking about. Most of them were faking it; they were forcing it in some way. You could tell. Mm -hmm. You know, today it's a lot more yeah. seamless. You get a lot. It's it's a lot harder to spot somebody who's method acting than someone who uh, is from the the prior era. Just because of that. Well, you can feel it. You can, yeah, that's true. And if someone isn't acting from, is, isn't coming from true emotion, you can sense it. It mm. doesn't feel sincere. That's right. You know, it feels yeah. fake, fake yeah. in some way. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder how actors do that too, because gosh, think about how, what a challenge that would be to be going through these highs and lows. And especially if you're doing like a dark film, having to relive. Those, you know, and if you do one take and another take and another take and another take, having to relive those dark places to get those emotions up. Well, I've never been to acting be school, but, but I've heard enough about some of it to realize that a lot of what they do is, is improv. Literally, they set a scene and they just start trying to be a character in that scene and live that character. And, you know, their mm -hmm. coach or their, their teacher will, will coach them, you know, they'll stop them and say, okay, you're trying to do this now. What's in your own past? You know, I, I'm not the teacher, so I don't really know exactly what they do, but I'm guessing that they're doing something like this. They're saying, you know, draw something from your own past. What do you, can you think of something in your past where you've experienced something like that? Get into that feeling place. Okay. Go again. You know, that kind of thing. And also yeah. it's about, it's, it's also there's sort of a mental gymnastic that a lot of them learn to do. Um, one of the more advanced ones, I remember seeing a scene from, it was an improv scene that was done at, uh, Juilliard when Robin Williams was there as a, as a last year student. And the, the only problem that Robin had at Juilliard from his own story, this is from a, a Robin Williams biopic. Um, he had trouble 
being the whole actor because he's such a comedian. You know, so even when he was doing something semi serious, he had to throw in something that was funny. Um, and and uh-huh. a- apparently they got him in trouble with, uh, oh, what's the guy's name who ran Juilliard? Um, the guy who uh, uh, did the, uh, the the Smith Barney commercials. We make money the old fashioned way. We earn it. Uh, no, I know. Wh- whatever that guy's Houseman, John Houseman. I know, I know. You mean, yeah, yeah, John Houseman. Um, Houseman, would, would, he'd get in trouble with Houseman because Houseman insisted that he actually do full method and not just. Um, do comedy, but there is one scene, and, and they have this on video where Robin is is just going off doing this character, and Houseman's in the background just cracking up, just loving it. <laughs> <laughs> so even John Houseman liked it when you when you broke character that way. But um, <laughs> it's it, it's interesting to watch. I mean, this particular scene that they were doing, they they were doing this thing where um, they would start doing a scene, and and the two players would. Uh, They'd be given a a topic like a, a theme, like you know, uh, sci-fi or something like that, and they on the spot invent a couple sci-fi characters, and they do a couple of lines, and then somebody would say switch, and that person who's saying switch thought of something they wanted to come in and do, so they'd switch with one of the other actors, and they'd come in and do their line, and you know, you, mm-hmm. you see a few of these come in, and then Robin would come in on a switch, and he would so completely throw the the script out the window and replace oh, it with something so... completely different. <laughs> I mean, talk about channeling. You, you could just so see crazy. the other young actors, their minds were swimming like, how do I keep up with this? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, and he was a, a, really an example of somebody that it seems like could be in such a high vibration and then go crashing down. Oh, yeah. That really low vibration, obviously, you know. A lot of people don't know this, but he put so much energy into not just doing his films and doing his stand-up, not just doing his appearances on TV, but also entertaining the crew of various sets that he was on because he always wanted to make sure that the crew were feeling up. He did Aww. so, he threw up, threw so much energy into that that he would have to take breaks and just go sit in a corner holding his wife's hand silently for like a half an hour just wow. to get his energy back because he threw so much of himself into it just to recharge. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Really That's interesting. Huh. I mean, huh. yeah. So I was just, the other thing I was just thinking about, this is completely off the subject, but it just appeared, uh, uh, occurred to me is the topic of overwhelm. Have you been feeling overwhelmed lately? It seems like everybody I know is feeling overwhelmed. I felt quite a bit last week. Um, Mm -hmm. In the past month, I felt quite a bit of overwhelm because of this medical situation with my wife. And uh, it's been severe enough that basically I've been running the house in addition to everything else that I do, in addition to taking care of her and everything. I mean, it's like this huge load hit me and right. that that's where my overwhelm was coming from and it, it's it's pretty overwhelming <laughs> yeah it is and that on top of it the worry yeah which makes everything more difficult to deal with because it just zaps your energy yep and then you know trying to get up to do two podcasts a day which actually was my saving grace believe it or not because i have wow. so much fun doing these podcasts that that that's how i got my yeah. recharge <laughs> nice yeah nice. but yeah overwhelming definitely i mean i what, what, what's your clue that you've been hearing it all over the place? You've just people telling well, you or I just, what? I mean, I've been, I, I tend to get overwhelmed fairly easily because I'm one of those people that, um, you know, my brain is always zipping in a thousand different directions and mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that I want to get done. Uh, and then I, you know, kind of, I'm one of those people that packs my schedule with appointments in between appointments in between appointments yes. because I just, uh, I love that social contact. Mm-hmm. So I keep squeeze and I think, Oh, I can do this. And I get excited about it and I squeeze it all in there. And then I've got so many things that I'm completely overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I have so many things on my list that I've got to do and so many things that I want to do. And so, you know, I'm one of those typical start all those projects, get excited about them. And then you're half done all these projects mm-hmm. and it makes it really overwhelming to, you know, I get to the point where Gosh, I gotta go back and work on that again, but it's so overwhelming that you procrastinate. Mm-hmm. Sure. So the overwhelm leads to procrastination, and you get into that cycle where you're just like, "Oh, forget it. I'm gonna just go watch <laughs> or take a walk." <laughs> so that's what the meetup was on last week. A lot of the ah. people at the meetup were talking about uh, ways that they're overwhelmed in their life and how it is to deal with that. Yeah, because you run a so, you run a meetup in the San Diego area on the Law of Attraction, mm-hmm. don't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's good. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of, there's a lot of tools that are in the back of the uh, Asking and Is Given book, or mm-hmm. strategies or processes, whatever it's called, that are um, 
that work for, I mean, a lot of different things, but overwhelm is one of them. Mm. And I was thinking about the placemat um, exercise. Do you remember that one that Esther talked about? Yeah, I, we haven't given that one much attention. But if I remember correctly, it's kind of like the, uh, the the book of positive aspects, but you do it on a placemat in a restaurant. Well, I don't know. It's similar. It's a little different than the book of positive aspects. At least my interpretation of it is. Okay. Where with the, with a placemat, I think the fact they calls it the placemat just because she happened to be at a restaurant. Right. There was a placemat in front of her. But so what she what Abraham instructed her to do was she had all these things she needed to do mm -hmm. and was completely overwhelmed by it. So she wrote all the things she had to do out on the placemat. Absolutely. It was like pages and pages. Like she had numerous placemats that she was writing, <laughs> writing, writing, all the things that she needed to do. I can totally relate to that. And then what the universe instructed her to do was take like those few things that she absolutely had to and was going to get done that day and put them on her own list. Mm-hmm. And all of the rest she gave to the universe to do. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's amazing how many of those things got done. Mm. I mean, it sounds like magical thinking, but it, it is kind of magical. Well, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It's incredible. And I've tried that myself. And you just, it, it has, I think, to do with the letting go. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not focusing and worrying and thinking negatively and doubting those things that I've got to do. And instead, I'm just going, okay. I'm going to let the universe take care of that, and I'm just letting go of it. And all of a sudden, those floodgates open where yeah. all that stuff that's in that vortex is able to come in mm -hmm. because of that letting go piece. No, I think you're right. And in, in fact, that kind of summarizes uh, uh, at least part of what I've been not doing deliberately necessarily, but uh, kind of by accident because there have been times where lately with all the overwhelm, you know, dealing with Louise's issue and so forth, um, there was just stuff I couldn't get to. I mean, it wasn't a question of putting it on the back of a placemat and letting the rest of it go to the universe. I just had to let it go. I mean, there was nothing I could do. It was just beyond my ability to do it. Which is very similar. Yeah. It's similar. And that's truly what you're doing. Some of it just kind of got prioritized away on its own because it just didn't need to be done mm -hmm. right away. Um, others of it, there, there was one where I thought for sure it was going to get in the way because it was a client of mine who, um, uh, I just, uh, I, I had, uh, read on a website. I turned it into a more modern website that they could do their own changes on. And, they needed me to write up a little step-by-step -step guide that my, the client is really tech challenged. I mean, really, really, really tech challenged. So he needed like to have one of those. We're talking flip phones. That, or, or earlier, or earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe they still have a dial phone with a, with a landline. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me at all. So, but so anyway, he needed to have that kind of thing. And, and he, I knew he had a board meeting. Today or tomorrow, actually, tomorrow is when his board meeting is because this is for his his organization. And the board meeting was when they were going to authorize the check to pay me for what I'm doing. And I'm thinking, well, oh. I got to get this to him so I can get paid. Mm -hmm. And I there was no way I was going to get to it. I knew I wasn't going to get to it, and yet I need the money to come in, right? And so I, I just gave up. And he he wrote me about it, and I really didn't know what to say. I just wrote back to him, well. He has also been dealing with a medical issue with his wife, a very, very serious one, much more serious than Louise's. Uh -huh. And when I told him what was going on, his entire tone changed. He says, oh, don't worry about it. Get to it when you get to it. No big deal. We'll send the check out, uh -huh. all this kind of thing. Like the whole thing just shifted right around simply because I let go of it. And why did I let go yeah. of it? Because I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> there were no right. other options. I just had to. Well, you you did have another option, though. Your option would have been, could have been, to worry and obsess about it and feel beat yourself up about it. It's a and funny if you'd thing. done that, it wouldn't have changed. <laughs> you're you're, you're probably you, right. You did like a, yeah. But, but this is one good time to actually be overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed, I didn't have time to worry about it. <laughs> That's how overwhelmed I was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And and it's funny how that's how the universe does work. Yeah. It just figures it out for you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how that happens. And I have done that before, but I put things on a list and you think, oh, I don't know how this is ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember even at one point feeling like as far as money was going, there was something about a money thing that came up that was just driving me crazy. I can't remember what it was. It had something to do with like I was laid on a bill and I got a collection thing or something and I was horrified and, and I just felt bad about it. And I just put out there that, gosh, I really just wanted to have – money flow easily to me. And I started getting like checks in the mail. And, I mean, it's crazy. It's amazing how when you just let go of stuff, 
the universe figures it out. That's true. And That's I know that. I, I, to someone who doesn't understand this or doesn't have this belief system, they look at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Like that's just magical thinking. But it is kind of magical. Well, I'll give you another example of it. Um, with all the stuff that we were dealing with, uh, the uh, med medical insurance, the health insurance that we've had for quite some time um, was due to expire. And I had to go through the process of applying to, to either reinstate that one for another year or get another one and found that the, uh, the cost of that one had skyrocketed and oh. I was, we weren't going to be able to afford it for next year. So there was only one plan left that we could get. And you know what, Patty, that plan covers everything for no cost to us. I mean, just wow. unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it was just, wow. I, I couldn't believe it. We, we went from like a plan where I was trying to figure out how we we're going to pay for the bills for all this thing that Louise is going through to, it's all paid for. Like, how did that wow. happen? <laughs> I don't Isn't understand. That incredible? And, and the timing was exquisite because all this started to happen in November at the exact point in time that we switched over to the new policy. I mean, perfect timing. The new card came the day that we went to the doctor's office. Wow. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. <laughs> Talk about perfect timing. It was crazy. <laughs> That's so wild. Yeah. That's so wild. So what else has been happening in your week? I mean, overall, it sounds like things are better than they, than they have been. Well, we've, we've, um, I, I, I'm not really at a point where I want to talk in specifics about what's been going on with her because all, partly because it's her issue rather than mine. And oh, absolutely, part, partly yeah. because yeah, I'm just not ready to talk about it in, in a public forum. But when you have something that is as time consuming as this has been, um, it knocks everything else out of the way. And literally, oh, yeah. you're running from the moment you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night. It's just con you're, you're constantly on the go, trying not even to catch up, just to like keep up with the bare minimum. You know, bare minimum of keeping the house clean, bare, enough, bare minimum of having the food on yeah. the table, bare minimum of you know doing the podcast, bare minimum of of, right. of you know all the things that I have to do in my life. Plus, you know, take care of her because she can't do a whole lot. And it's like whoa, you, you're just running all the time. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't even have time to think about it being overwhelming. I was too overwhelmed to do that. <laughs> right, right. And it worked out. It worked out. Yeah. It worked out that there was probably some of those things on that list that if you'd had the time, you would have put all this time and energy and effort I, into that didn't even need to happen. I probably would have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing from my perspective uh, in terms of experiencing the whole thing is that as all of the, as the whole thing unfolded, as the whole experience, you know, step by step experience unfolded, it was amazing to me how often the phrase that I had been saying to myself over the last three to six months kept coming true and kept coming back to me in my mind. And that is, the universe has my back. The universe has my back. And every time I turned around and something new happened, I said, there's another example of it. The universe has my back. I, I had no way to fix that. It fixed it for me. Holy cow. The universe has my back. So yep. you're looking at those positive aspects. Yeah. What yeah. is it? What is it that's happening in my life that's showing me that there are really good things happening? Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it, it, and it's one of those things that is both. Um, it's it's reassuring because it reinforces for me that the stuff works, but it's also a way for me to get more and more into the zone of keep trying to put it out there. Keep trying to put it out there. You know, just just keep going with it and, and build the momentum because that's what's really happening here. It's the momentum is building up. Um, well, that and, and, and also the universe, you know, you never know when something happens why it's happening at the moment. Oh, I mean, God. a lot of times things seem to happen that are negative. Yeah. But you find out later on it was all part of the universe's amazingly smart way of helping you ultimately get what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. And at yeah. the time you're thinking, why is this happening? But then later, a lot of times, you know, you can look back and say, gosh, that made total sense that this led to this, led to this, led to this. And I would never have been able to figure out how to do that on my own. Exactly. Yeah. Because we got our little tiny brains and the universe has that really big brain. That's why <laughs> that, that's why we're so easily into overwhelm right there. You just yeah. put your finger on it because there's only so much that we can individually handle. But when, when we started surpassing that, which doesn't take a whole lot, <laughs> it's, it's pretty that's easy true. to start surpassing that. Well, that That's just true. just shows one more time why it's so important to put it into the hands of God slash the universe slash source energy slash inner being slash whatever you want to call it slash 
inner yeah. patty, higher patty, <laughs> higher wall, inner wall. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's funny, I found, I found that a lot with jobs, that it turns out that initially, um, like one time when I got laid off from a position and it didn't, I couldn't figure out where that was leading to. And I ended up getting a job. The next job that I got was combined with that previous job, the perfect experience I needed in order to get the job that I have now. Oh, and nice. at the time you're like, why is this happening that way? But yeah. it turns out, I mean, and that's why I try to remind myself whenever I'm in that bad place that there could be a reason why this is happening the way that it is because it's ultimately going to thing that the universe has figured out how to make it all work. Are you reading some comments? I'm, yeah, lots of positive comments and people saying, oh, so true. Hello. Yes, that, I agree. Wow, that is awesome. Oh, yes, you never know. I mean, lots of good comments like that. One person uh, included a whole bunch of their friends' names because they wanted their friends to come uh, hear what we're talking about. So, so people oh, are enjoying cool. it. Yeah, that's really good. Um, Jamie posted Excellent. about the method acting. She said, Meth method acting is like an embodiment of a state. And that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what you're trying to do. That's really true. Yeah, that's a good point. She also mentioned that the low vibrational, low vibrational thoughts equals thinking a thought not in alignment with our higher self and source. And that's exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Personal alignment videos is a super idea. Yeah, she said that one. Yeah, okay. Just catching up. I want to make sure I got all the, the, uh, the comments noticed. <laughs> we haven't actually gotten any so questions today. I, that's the one thing. I'm, I'm, know, I'm a little surprised. Normally we get lots of questions when we do a Q&A. We haven't gotten any so far. Yeah. You know, but, well, uh, hopefully some will pop up. Well, there's, there's a few minutes So left. One, one thing I did want to mention since we have a little pause here is, um, you know, I'll do my little, my little plug, my shameless plug. Sure. Uh, that if anybody is interested in, in either being part of the meetup, it's called, if they live in the San Diego area, it's called the North County Law of Attraction Meetup. Mm -hmm. uh, that they can sign up for that, and it's once a month on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. And um, if anybody's interested in contacting me personally, they can email patty at pattyframocoaching.com, P-A-T-T-Y-F-R-A-M-O. And the other thing that I've got coming up is starting in January, I'm putting together a group, like a coaching class slash group, um, if anyone is in the San Diego County area, um, that's going to be a, a six-week program on Tuesday nights, and it's going to be for those more novice law of attraction people mm -hmm. who want to, uh, we're going to be using asking and as given and going through the different steps and um, looking at uh, actually practicing some of the processes and exercises in the back of the book on things that apply to their personal lives and coming up with challenges and strat and, and issues that are uh, causing pain or discomfort or unhappiness for mm. them uh, and actually addressing them by using those processes and practicing them and supporting each other as a group. Very good. Yeah. So, so yeah. same kind of idea as pivot so tiles, but in a more live environment, which is good because when everybody's in the exactly. same room, it's a different kind of vibe that way. Yeah. And, and people really are very supportive of each other as well, which is nice. Yeah, that is so good. So I'm hoping to have between eight and 10 people in that group. So right now I've got about three people signed up so far. Good. Good. Well, you'll, you'll probably yeah. get it. I was just realizing one yeah. of the reasons we probably don't have a whole lot of people come here to ask questions is I forgot to post this last week. So this only got posted oh. this morning. So it's not like people had a whole lot of warning that we were going to do Q and a today. That, that, uh. That's probably why, but that's okay. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bronwyn is, so has have you guys some got nice things too. She, Bronwyn is the one who said that, wow, this is awesome. And she said, your, your talk is so interesting. We are in just, we are just in awe. And she's got a big smiley face. And I thought that's, that's just Aww. really nice. <laughs> really, oh, really cool. sweet. Oh, Christy wants to know how long have we both been practicing law of attraction? All of our lives. But that's not really the answer you're looking for. <laughs> how long have we consciously and deliberately been Deliberately. Practicing? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, let's see. For me, I started in November 2007 when I first saw The Secret. That was when it started for me. Yeah? I remember way back when, when I was in college, one of my roommates was into Wayne Dyer. Mm. And I thought it was the most ridiculous thing. I'm like, <laughs> how airy-fairy. Like, you just think something and it happens? I mean, yeah, right. That's really going to work. You know, I was completely not in that place yet of being able to even hear about it. Mm. But when The Secret came out, I mean, there was something very, you know, I, there's things I liked about it and things I didn't like about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 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 basic thing about it that I thought was so wonderful is that it kind of did uh, make the message palatable for the general public. Yes. That 
um, gosh, you know, look what you can do and get out of this. Mm-hmm. What I didn't like about it is that it was um, very, it seems sort of really sort of glitzy and marketing driven and kind of money oriented. And it, and it didn't, for me, uh, it, what was so, what I do appreciate about it is that it opened me up to the whole concept mm-hmm. and it was just at the right time. Uh, and what it did then was it, it helped me to have an interest in delving a little deeper mm. and, and going in through the layers because it was kind of simplistic mm-hmm. and, and it didn't, you know, it was just, it had a purpose, which yeah. was to make it palatable for the general public. Right. And that I felt was very effective. Look at how many people, oh, millions of people. became aware Absolutely. of the whole concept just through that. Exactly true. So, and, Chris, and it's yes. funny, I don't remember. Christy asked, was it, was it Secret the Book or Secret uh, the Movie? Or Jamie said Secret the Movie. And, yeah, I actually I saw the movie first. The book came out second as a, sort of a mostly a transcription of the movie. But I, I actually did both. I don't know about you. I, I did the movie, then I did the yeah, book. Yeah, I did and both. Then, and then I said, well, what's next? Because <laughs> that was yeah, kind of like you. exactly. To, to me, the secret is, is LOA light. It's good. It just yes. doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it. You need the, exactly. I, I, think, I think most people need to have the depth. The depth is really useful. So as much as I enjoyed The Secret and, and was glad that I was exposed to it, if somebody rec- asked me to recommend a book, I won't recommend The Secret. I'll recommend the Abraham Hicks book, Law of Attraction, The Basics of the Teachings of Abraham, because it's so in-depth and yet it's so easy to understand. It's both. And I often recommend Ask and It Is Given just because it doesn't – sometimes for some people, if they don't want to ha- read so much detail, mm-hmm. um, they just want to kind of get the basic idea of what Law of Attraction is about mm-hmm. and learn some of the processes. That, that I felt was a good place to start. Mm-hmm. And then – but although I – you know, I don't know how it, – it's so funny. Abraham Hicks just kind of fell into my lap, and I don't know how that occurred. It was sort of I got into Marianne Williamson and some other things, and I don't know if it maybe was from The Secret when Esther was on in that first – version that they had well that's but, what it was for me because i didn't see the first version i saw the what they call i think it was they call it the enhanced version or something like that the, the one that mm-hmm. most people got when they bought it only i think it was the first one hundred thousand was the copy that had esther in it and then they wrote esther out and i'd heard that there was an earlier version that had this person esther hicks in there that's how i heard about abraham hicks I had, I had mm-hmm. never heard of it before, and then I heard that there was this person who was receiving this this um, non physical being, and that was like the real basis for the secret. And I said, "Yeah, well, well where where's the video? How do I find out about that?" How do I fi- exactly. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find a copy anywhere for years. I couldn't find a copy. I finally actually did what, get one. I have now a, a copy of both copies of the video. I have the Esther Hicks version and the non Esther Hicks version, but. Uh, yeah, I mean that that actually sent me off on my. I quest. have to look at mine again. I have to look at mine again and see. I can't remember if it was the one. Do I know? I know that I did see her in it at one point, mm. and somehow fell into that whole law of attraction of the whole Abraham Hicks thing. And once I heard that, I was hooked. Mm. It was like, I, it felt right in my bones. Mm. There was like, there was just like everything about it resonated with me, and I, I, I'd been searching for religions and spiritual beliefs my whole life. You know, I was brought up Catholic originally and then went through all these, you know, I was a born again Christian when I was 13 and then I fell out of that. I went through all the different, <laughs> you know, I studied it in college, Buddhism and Hinduism, all that. It was all interesting to me, but there was too many rules. There was like not enough that quite felt right to me. Exactly. And Unity Church, which is part of a Church of Relig- Religious Science, is the most, the closest to me. Mm-hmm. But it's still... For me personally, a little churchy, mm-hmm. and the word God doesn't resonate for my, as much for me. Mm-hmm. But somehow, once I heard Abraham Hicks and and heard what how the whole concept behind it, it it was it made perfect sense. It made absolutely perfect sense. And what's so amazing to me is, no matter how many times I mean, I listen to it every single day. <laughs> it just totally raises. I do every morning. It's I'm getting ready in the morning, and that's all I listen to. That's part of your it routine. Just raises my vibration. Well, that's yeah. good. And there's something about it that um, just is so consistent. No matter mm. how many you listen to, no matter how many different topics they talk about, there is no way that a human being could get everything so consistently perfect every single time. Yeah, they're really good about that. And I think that is, you're right. I think it's the advantage of having all those non-physical beings all contributing to it rather than just one. If you had just one, you'd probably get some 
I'll call it stiffness in the answer. Like the, the answers would sometimes be stiff because they were trying to stick to their one little thing to do. But when you have so many beings that are all contributing to it, that's what makes Abraham work so well. Because, and we've talked mm-hmm. about this. There, there are times when it seems like Abraham is being really harsh, and there are other times it seems like Abraham is being really gentle. And I'm convinced it's because of whichever non physical being has the microphone at the moment, you know, whichever one they pick as the right one to address the needs of that particular person who's in the hot seat. So maybe, maybe when I go, I'm going on the Alaskan Abraham cruise. Oh, you are? Which I'm, next summer I'm really excited about. I've never been to Alaska. I've been on a few of their trips, um, but maybe I'll get in the hot seat and I'll get to ask that. Well, there. You, well, you know, of course, there, there is a connection between the Alaskan cruise and the secret. Oh, there is. There is. That. Yeah, the secret. A What's lot the of the a lot of the secret was filmed on the Alaskan cruise. Oh. Because they had all those oh. famous people all at that same event. So it was it was it an Abraham Hicks Alaskan cruise? Yeah. Or was it just an? Oh Alaskan? yeah. So that's so interesting that she was cut out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh. Fascinating. Rhonda was concerned that it was going to interfere with the marketing, so, you know. <laughs> well, and I heard also, I actually saw an interview where Esther said that it had also something to do with the fact that there was a contract initially put out there that then getting ended up getting changed because after everything was all done and it was put out, uh, Rhonda wanted to change it so that right. she could get royalties from everything. Yeah. Well, I think so, she was getting royalties anyway, but... It, it, depends, it, it depends on who you listen to. <laughs> That's what's so interesting. If you, can, if you can find the different stories, the stories dovetail a lot, but like usually happens with stories, there are also differences in them. Um, the one that I found yeah. to be interesting was there was an article that was published in The Australian, which is kind of like Australia's version of, oh, of I like saw that magazine. One. You, you see that article? Yeah. And that, mm-hmm. that one had some really interesting takes. It, they were, it was a little bit negative take in some ways, but yeah. it was kind of, yeah. but, but it was still, it was, it was enlightening to see what it was like from that viewpoint. Cause you, you pick stuff up that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise I found. So I, I thought that was yeah. a really good article, but That's yeah, true. I mean, there, there's just so many different, I mean, I actually talked to the guy who did the social media, the one oh, who, the one, the one who helped make it go viral on social media. I had a conversation with him by phone one time. And got his wow. take on what it was like, you know, working with Rhonda Byrne. And what did and he that. say? Um, well, I promise him, I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't say a whole lot of it because he couldn't say a whole lot. Oh, okay. He was, because oh, okay. they'd been through some lawsuits. And as a result oh. of the lawsuits, he, there were certain things he just couldn't talk about. He hinted at some things. Um, one of the most fascinating things that he hinted at, and I still am not completely sure about this, this may have been his his bias too, because he had a downer on Rhonda Byrne. He, he felt like Rhonda treated him badly. But um, um. in his words, roughly half of the presenters of The Secret were frauds. <gasps> that's, that's, so interesting. that's what he said. Now, he said half of them were legitimate. And he said he himself is not a believer in the law of attraction. So, But he, he felt wow. that, that half of them were legitimate, that they were genuine, honest, and so on and so forth. He said the other half, he wouldn't trust them as far as he could throw them. Yeah, I did sense some some that didn't feel real to me. Did you in watching that? I remember. Yeah, I remember feeling kind of like, oh, this is just a marketing thing mm. on some of them, where yeah. they just wanted to kind of get clients or something. You know, it didn't yeah. feel really genuine. Right. But there's something about when Esther channels Abraham that is just it just feels so genuine and so real. That's what me. was so interesting and about every- the Esther part of the secret, because once you see the version that has her in it, I mean her contribution was minimal in terms of what Rhonda edited in that it's almost, it's a wonder that she edited it out. I mean, why didn't she even bother? It's not like there was this major Abraham thing going on. It it just seemed like Esther talking to the camera. So I didn't yeah, quite understand that, but, uh, and Esther Hicks, Abraham receiving workshop is a completely different experience from the secret. I'm mm-hmm. uh, completely different. Uh, cause, oh, yeah, cause you're yeah. right. I mean, you, you, when you hear the whole thing in context, uninterrupted, unedited, the whole flow, it just makes sense in, in ways that nothing else makes sense. And that's true. And I've enjoyed a lot of the, the gurus, if you will. Um, I, lately I've been enjoying Neville Goddard. Cindy, uh, Chavez and I have been doing the Neville Goddard books and they're fun. They're, they're really good. Um, I still say mm-hmm. Abraham's at the top of the list. They're really, really good. Yeah. Totally <laughs> for me. Yeah. Totally for me. I have to say, I'm just a one flavor person. You're one flavor. Uh, <laughs> seriously, well, I, I, I know that I should be open to those other ones, but Abraham Hicks is the one that just, it, it just hits me in my heart. It totally feels right to me. 
Jamie made a really good comment. She says different people resonate with different ways of presenting the ideas. And that's exactly true. Yeah. That's exactly true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like with a process. I mean, you have to go with whatever feels right to you for both you and me. Abraham felt right. So that's where we, we, you know, put our, our highest vote, so to speak for you, your exclusive votes. I actually kind of, you know, swim out and, and explore the others too. Um, but you have to go with what feels right. Um, I mean, Louie and I were, were chatting about the um, meditation after the, the podcast. Well, during the podcast this morning, but afterward as well. And uh, he, he was recommending to me that uh, um, I should I should give meditation another chance. You know, the actual sit down meditation because I've made no bones about the fact that it, it just doesn't really seem to work for me. And I agree with him. I agree with him. You think so? Okay. Well, I think you should try it again. Well, what, what like maybe guided meditation or maybe something that's a little different. Possibly. Possibly. I, I, there was one guided meditation I had many years before I even knew about the law of attraction that I loved. Um, a lot of them kind of leave me flat. But um, what I asked that? him was why, and he said, well, it's because it's for quieting the mind. And I said, yeah, but I've, I've pretty much learned to quiet my mind. Um, I mean, there are times that I still need to work on it a little bit, but I haven't found the meditation has worked. And he says, well, that's because you just aren't meditating enough. You need to get into the quieter, quiet mind. I said, well, what's quieter than silent? <laughs> and he said, "Well, it's it's more silent than silent." And I said, "Okay, I'll go with this." So, uh, so what do you get when you go after you know more silent than silent? He says, "You get what you want." I said, "Oh, all right, okay." <laughs> uh, well, guess what? We're out of time. How about Did that? Time? It's amazing, but we had a good time. <laughs> we didn't. We, we raised all the questions ourselves, and we answered them. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We just can talk to ourselves. <laughs> we can do that all the time, anyway. But. No, well, I love talking with you anyway, because I found that, I mean, every co-host is different and I enjoy all of them. You're the one that I feel like it's just the easiest conversation because we're so much on the same wavelength. I mean, yeah, when, yeah. You, when, when you utter the thought, it's exactly the thought I had in mind. And so it's just kind of flows. Easy peasy. Yeah. Yep. Really easy. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, cool. well, this has been All good. Right, we're high-fiving ourselves. Yep. Today. High five. Woo. Hooray. <laughs> and I will be sure to put out the, the event announcement today instead of next Monday. So people have time to sign up for it and, and prepare their schedules so they can come and do the Q and A with us. But, uh, no, okay. Sounds good. good. And I would love to welcome novices to, Absolutely. to really get some of those, uh, basic concepts down. I love talking about that and love teaching about it. Yeah. In fact, if you, uh, if you're hearing this and, and you know it's coming up next week, share it with your friends. You know anybody who's still you know, you know, learning how all this kind of thing works? You know, put their name in when you see the announcement so that they can see it too. Share the exactly. share the love, so to speak. And by oh, the way, okay. become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber. The details are in the description. Patty, it's been great. I look forward to talking to you next week. All right, sounds good. Take all right, we'll see you all next time here on Elevate today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs>